If you know me, you know I like to make fun of girls on Tinder. Let's do that some more. It's funny that people have to specifically state in their bios sometimes that they're not looking to be a unicorn or anybody's third, because I will see couples on there asking for that, and it is straight up gross. I saw a married couple under a girl's profile. It said Brandy and Devin 19. They're 19 and married and already failing so hard they have to solicit innocent bystanders to save the bedroom? Wow. Maybe don't get married the day after you graduate high school to a guy who wears a baseball cap and doesn't play baseball. He's going to cheat on you immediately if he wasn't doing it the whole time prior. And you're going to find out, but you'll be so deep into it at such a young, dumb age, you'll think you have no choice but to try and make it work, and you'll end up just giving him whatever he wants now that he's eliminated whatever self-esteem you already didn't have. It's a travesty. I hate low self-esteem, as I've said many times, so when I encounter it in a girl, I try to raise it. It's the only sensible thing to do, other than just leave and be like, yeah, somebody else can deal with that. But if I like someone, I'll put in the effort, and some girls have told me it's really helped, so good for both of us. If every girl had good self-esteem, the world would be a better place. Dudes, if you're talking to a girl right now, or are in a relationship with one, and she struggles in that area, make it your duty to find true things about them you can hype up. You can't just bullshit. They can see through that. And if they well and truly suck ass, and there's really nothing positive to say, about them, then what the hell are you doing in their vicinity to begin with? If anything, your presence is giving them false hope that they're worth something and contradicting other experiences in their lives with people who don't have a reason to blow smoke up their ass, and that makes it hard for the girl to know whether the guy she's talking to is being genuine or if he's just using her for something, which is quite the predicament, and since she has low self-esteem to begin with, she'd no doubt default to the assumption that he was just using her, further deteriorating her sense of self in the process and putting her into a state of being where any attempt to raise her self-esteem would instead have the opposite effect, like a paradoxical reaction to an antidote that makes the poison worse. Damn, that sucks. I don't know what to do about girls who truly have no noticeable benefits to their existence, but I do know that the vast, vast, vast majority of girls with low self-esteem are not irredeemable. There's always something, and there's usually a bunch of things. And I know if any of you are out there and having trouble thinking of something right now about yourselves, it may not be visible to you, but it'll be visible to the right people. Those people are better judges of what you outwardly bring to the table, because they're in the position to see it from the point of view of the rest of the planet. It's your perspective versus society's, and you might think yours overrules it because you've spent more time with yourself than other people have, but you've only given yourself more and more time to develop a mind-clouding bias that other people don't have to deal with. They won't see a forced perspective through a tinted lens. They just see you as you appear to everyone else. It's you versus effectively you. And effectively you is the you that ends up making an impact in people's lives. My favorite is when girls have poor body image, but like they're clearly attractive, and I get to be 100% genuine when I tell them that. It just brings a smile to my face in disbelief. Like, you? You think you're not attractive? Have you looked in a mirror that wasn't in a carnival funhouse? Look at the selfie you just sent me. Look at this shit right now. You're literally adorable. I found that sometimes you can, in fact, abuse people with compliments until they believe you. Maybe it won't cure them, but it'll help noticeably. And when people feel better about their body image, they're more likely to share that image with you. So even from a purely selfish standpoint, it's still more beneficial to raise people's self-esteem than step on it. Stepping on it will backfire eventually. You might be able to skate by on degrading coercion for a while, but is that really the kind of interaction you want? It doesn't end well, unless you think sexual misconduct allegations surface against you in the future after she's found some inner mental vitality is a good ending. I mean, it is for her, if the allegations are true, but she'd still have been better off never falling prey to your borderline sexual psychopathy. Anyway, back to girls on Tinder. Have you seen these fucking donkeys who get tattoos on the inside of their lower lip? I don't get it and I don't want to. How much do you have to hate your father to get the word STFU tattooed up against your gums? It's one of the most disturbing trends I've ever witnessed. If you have low self-esteem, it's deserved, and there are no redeeming qualities. You should tie yourself up in a plastic bag and dump yourself in a river. Every time you talk, the words have to pass through an STFU filter before they can even leave your mouth, which makes anything you might be trying to say become trash on arrival. It boggles the mind just how much people are willing to cheapen themselves in the pursuit of expressing to the world that they don't care. 
If you really didn't care what people thought, you wouldn't go so far to try and make sure they understand that you don't care. You're not supposed to care if they understand. You're not supposed to live for the effect you have on other people if you don't care about other people. Every decision you make, it's like, yeah, suck on this. Yeah, I'm being who I am. Deal with it. You're not being who you are. You're being a caricature of how you want other people to see you, which is supposed to somehow validate the existence of the person you're not being. Explain your logic to me. The identity you strive for is a reaction to the judgment of society, and by embodying it, you are somehow proving that you're unaffected by the judgment of society. All right, have fun wrestling with that one. Anyway, back the girls on Tinder. I've been seeing a disturbing amount of profiles lately that claim to be into witchcraft, like legit. They're like, oh yeah, I'm a witch, or oh yeah, I like hiking, witchcraft, and poetry. If by poetry you mean incantations, you freak. Is witchcraft the new paganism? Because girls used to be saying they were pagan while sharing pictures of themselves standing next to cauldrons and shit, but I don't see that anymore, just witchcraft. One girl was into witchcraft on her bio, and her job said she was a registered nurse. I think witchcraft should be a disqualifier for working in the medical field. No hospital's ever been like, Heather, we need 50 cc's of toad slime, stat. I'd be worried about a patient's cancer worsening whenever the nurse got called in to administer something. Let them stick to hex bags and poison apples. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at sunburnedalbino, and I'll see you guys next time.